فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد We're in our explanation of the book Kitab al-Waraqat written by Al-Imam Abi Ma'ali al-Juwaini rahimahu Allah ta'ala We finished speaking about Al-Majaz and Al-Haqiqah And today insha'Allah ta'ala we're going to be speaking about a fasl min usmin fusuli a chapter of a unit from the units that are found in the books of Usul al-Fiqh and it is the matters pertaining to Al-Amru, commands and the author Rahimahullah he says some command and prohibition Amr wa Nahi a command is a verbal demand demand obliging an inferior to do an action the verbal form that indicates command is if'al, the imperative. When unqualified and in the absence of indications to the contrary, it is interpreted as obligation, except when some evidence indicates that recommendation or permission is meant. The correct view is that command does not require the repetition of the act unless some evidence indicates that repetition was intended, nor does it require immediate action. The command to perform an action is a command to perform both the act and whatever is required for the completion of the act. So the command to perform the prayer is a command enjoining ablution that paves the way for the prayer. When the act is performed, then the, perf- then the person to whom the command was addressed is released from the charge laid upon him. Faslun wal amru. استدعاء الفعل بالقول ممن هو دونه على سبيل الوجوب وصيغته افعل وعند الاطلاق والتجرد عن القرينة يحمل على الوجوب إلا إذا دل الدليل على أن المراد منه الندب أو الإباحة فيحمل عليه ولا يقتضي ولا يق ولا يقتضي تكرارا على الصحيح إلا إذا دل الدليل عليه ولا يقتضي الفور لأن الغرض منه إيجاد الفعل من غير اختصاص بالزمان بالزمان الأول دون الزمان الثاني والأمر بإيجاد الفعل أمر به وبما لا يتم الفعل إلا به كالأمر بالصلاة أمر بالط كالأمر بالصلاة أمر بالطهارة المؤدية مؤدية إليها وإذا فعل يخرج المأمور عن عهدة الأمر الأوثر رحمه الله he places a chapter here in which he speaks about الأمر command and he defines what أمر means and he says استدعاء الفعل بالقول ممن هو دونه على سبيل الوجوب استدعاء is basically to request and that request can sometimes be in a forceful manner and it can be in a requested manner that is not in a forceful manner and he says استدعاء الفعل so you're requesting for an action بالقول by speech Mimman huwa dunahu But the one who is requesting this action Are you with me brothers? Is requesting this action to somebody who is lower than him in rank Mimman huwa dunahu Ala sabil al-wujub in a forceful manner So the Shaykh rahimahullah here he's saying that um, Amar is that You're requesting for an action By speech the way you're, tr- you're trying for the, your requesting from this person to come with his action is by speaking to them. And the one who's speaking is higher in rank and higher in status and higher in position than the one who is requesting. 
in a forceful manner. So this definition is, can be argued. The reason why it can be argued is because specifying the istida'a'ul fi'li, the request of the action by statement only, by you, can, you request a person to do an action only by statement, that's deficient. Because we know it can happen by writing. I can tell you to do something and command you to do something by writing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he commanded Musa alayhi salatu was salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he commanded Musa alayhi salatu was salam. Legislations. That was written on the law. The alwah. The scrolls. وَبَعَثَ النَّبِي صلى الله عليه وسلم سَرِيَّةً The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said a delegation. عليه الصلاة والسلام وَمَعَهُمْ كِتَابٌ And with them were books. With them were papers and notes and letters. فَأَمَرَهُمْ أَنْ يَفْتَحُوا إِذَا بَلَغُوا مَكَانَ كَذَا وَكَذَا And he didn't tell them what was in it. He just said, when you go to that place, open it. فَكَانَتِ الْكِتَابَ كِتَابُ The book was taking the place of what? جَارِيَةٌ مَجْرَ الْقَوْلَ It was taking the place of a speech. In terms of what? فِي لُزُوبِ الْأَمْرِ In terms of coming with the action in a forceful manner. So if a person who's higher than you in rank, a person of authority, writes something and tells you to do something, by writing it, it takes the same ruling as though if they told you verbally to come with it. So for him to restrict it to be verbal is incorrect on the side of the author, Al-Imam Abi Ma'ali al-Jawini rahimahullah ta'ala. So the correct definition that we're going to choose, At-Ta'rif al-Mukhtar, the chosen definition is أن الأمر, that the Amr is هو خطاب الشرع المقتضي للفعل It is the command of the legislation, the Sharia is requesting. For something to come from you and for you to do an action, it's requesting from you. Or in another wording, مَا طَلَبَهُ الشَّارِعُ فِعْلَهُ طَلَبًا جَازِمًا It is whatever the Sharia requests from you to do in a forceful manner. That's what Amr is. Also the author then started to speak about وَسِيغَتُهُ It's forms that it occurs. After he defined it, the second thing which he spoke about is وَصِيغَتُهُ The forms in which it comes. And if you look at the forms which the author rahimahullah mentioned, he only mentioned الصِيغَةُ sariha الصِيغَةُ sariha Which is that, it was the, one, the first form which is الصِيغَةُ sariha which is the direct form of command. Because there's two ways, a direct form and an indirect form. So the author, rahimahullah, here he mentioned the direct form. And what we know is that that's not the only form there is when it comes to commanding for somebody to come with an action. <coughs> And there are four types which the scholars mention that are known as Asiratul Amri Sariha. Four types. The Sarih one is four. Al Alama Hafid al Hakami Rahimullah in his Kitab Wasila Tul Husul. He says it in one line of poetry. He says, Arba'u al Fadim biha al Amru Duri. If Ali Taf Alis Mufil in Mazdari. He says, Arba'u al Fadim, two, four left, four wordings are what is known as what? Siyagul Amri as the direct form of command. The first one is Arba'u al Fadim biha al Amru Duri, if al du. The second one is Litaf al, which is Lamu Amr. Litaf al. Al Ismu Fi'il. Ismu? Ismu Fi'il. And last but not least, Mazdari, a verbal noun. And there's also a siyag, forms that are what? Siyagun ghayru sariha, forms that are not direct. And the majority of the usuliyin, the scholars of usul al-fiqh, majority of them don't mention this form, which is the siyagah, the form which is ghayru sariha. Majority of them don't mention it. But there are two 
Huzzaq min al muhaqqiqin two noble imams who are grounded in this field of usul al fiqh who both have who both have spoken about it and brought it out one being al allama ibn al qayyim al jawziya rahimahullah in his great book bada'i al fawaid his book bada'i al fawaid he mentions it and also muhammad ibn ismail al sanani in his book in his manzuma in usul al fiqh And in the Sharia, the command comes a lot of the times not in the direct form. It comes in the form that's indirect. From the forms that are indirect, that come in the Quran is the word Allah. So in the kalima ta'ala, because the word Allah, it indicates Al ijabi fit tasarruf shar'i. As Allah says in the Quran, وَلِلَّهِ عَلَى النَّاسِ حِجُّ الْبَيْتِ مَنِ اسْتَطَاعَ إِلَيْهِ سَبِيلًا وَلِلَّهِ Allah has on the creation and made it obligatory on them حِجُّ الْبَيْتِ Pilgrimage of the Kaaba. They have to go to the Kaaba. مَنِ اسْتَطَاعَ إِلَيْهِ سَبِيلًا whichever, the, whichever of those who is able to do so. Ayah in Surah Al Imran, Ayah 97. وَلِلَّهِ عَلَى النَّاسِ حِجُّ الْبَيْتِ and then after that, the author mentions, the author after that he mentions, and هذه السياق, these forms that are here, when it's unrestrictedly said, and there is no restriction on it, it is taken as a command. When the word if al comes, unrestrictedly it's a, com- it's a command, and it is something you have to do. And you have to come with it. But if there comes an evidence and it pushes away from that, what can it fall to? A nedbu. Remember, brothers. Sometimes an evidence may come and it might divert it, which is what we say. Al amru taqtadi al wujub ma lam yati qarina tusarrif an al wujub ila al nedbi, right? That the command shows obligation. Unless there comes an external force, an external evidence. Are you with me, brothers? That diverts it from obligation and makes it into what? Into recommendation. It takes it away from obligation and it being uh, obligatory, it takes it to be it to be in recommendation. For example, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. said sallu pray i think before salat al isha the prophet said pray two the prophet said say pray two rak'ah he said sallu that's a command that is a command but the ending of the hadith the prophet said he said liman sha'a whoever wishes liman sha'a is a qarina If it wasn't there, it would have been what? Wajib. But then the narration came and what did it say? Liman sha'a, whoever wishes. This is an external evidence. This is an external point that then now diverts it from. But the asal, indal itlaqi wa tajarrudi. When it said unrestrictedly, what does it show? It shows, it shows obligation. Then the author talks about, he talks about the issue of at tikrar which is that can, if Allah commands you to do something, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he c- tells you to come with something, or the messenger tells you to come with something, and they command you to do something, does it show repetition? Do you have to keep doing it? Does that action itself show repetition? That the person has to repeat it. it. What we say is that, and the author also said it as well. Wala It doesn't show repetition. Ala sahih, a command does not show repetition. It does show obligation, but it doesn't show repetition. Unless there comes an external evidence 
that shows it's what? That it's needed repetition. And that the strongest evidence that the scholars use is what? Are you with me, brothers? Is that when the man came to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what did he say? When the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Inna ala nasi, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, upon the people is Hajj to go and do go to the Kaaba and do Hajj. The man came to the Messenger, he said, Afaku awa kulla amin ya Rasulullah, is this every year? Do I have to do this every single year? And the Prophet went silent. And he said, Oh Messenger of Allah, do I need to do this every single year? And the Prophet went silent. And he said, Ya Rasulullah, do I have to do this every year? And the Messenger said to him, إِذَا أَمَرْتُكُمْ بِأَمْرٍ فَأْتُوا مِنْهُ مَسْتَطَعْتُمْ فَإِنَّمَا أَهْلَكَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ كَثَرَةُ مَسَائِلِ وَاخْتِلَافُمْ عَلَىٰ أَنْبِيَاهِمْ And he said, مَا نَهِيتُكُمْ عَنْهُ فَاجْتَنِبُهُ وَمَا أَمَرْتُكُمْ بِهِ فَأْتُوا مِنْهُ مَسْتَطَعْتُمْ فَإِنَّمَا أَهْلَكَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ كَثَرَةُ مَسَائِلِ وَاخْتِلَافُمْ عَلَىٰ أَنْبِيَاهِمْ That the man asked questions outside the point that the Prophet mentioned. So he rebuked it for it. So what the Prophet was saying that is my statement does not hold that. How do, why do you ask external issues for? So the command does not show, the Usulian took from this, that the command does not show repetition. You don't have to repeat it and do it. When, unless there comes a what? Unless there comes a dalil an additional evidence that proves that tikrar is required from you. Like for example, salah. Are you with me brothers? If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to us, وَأَقِيمُ salah," Establish the prayer. Can somebody say, I took from this tikrar? Did he take the tikrar from this ayah? So would he, we have to have prayed all the time? Where did you get the evidence that you have to pray all the time? Qawluhu ta'ala Aqimi salata Liduluki shamsi Ila ghasaqi al-layli Wa Qur'an al-fajri Inna Qur'an al-fajri kana mashuda Allah specifically commanded you to stand whenever this comes. So this is a dalil za'idah. Whenever these timings happen Aqimi salata liduluki shamsi When the sun Duluki shams occurs Pray the salah. إلى غسق الليل and when it is غسق الليل pray in other words whenever that happens you need to pray so repetition is, is needed from you this is a dalil za'ida additional evidence that proved the repetition that's needed for the salah but the repetition of the salah was not taken from وَأَقِيمُ الصَّلَاةِ established a prayer وَلَا and then the author رحمه الله he spoke about the issue which is known as وَلَا يَقْتَضِ الْفَوْرِ and also the command does not show that you have to do it straight away. The command that the Quran and the Sunnah gives us, it doesn't show that we have to do it straight away. What does al fawriya mean? al fawriya means هي المبادرة إلى الفعل في أول زمن الإمكان It is to do the action at the first time which you're able to do so. So fawriya means it is to hasten in coming with this action at the earliest time in which you're able to. And the strongest, if we choose between those two opinions, and this is the قول that Imam Abi Ma'ali Jwaini took, but القول المختار, the strongest opinion, is والصحيح, and it's the most authentic opinion, أن الأمر يقتضي الفورية, that he does show fawriya. Because he enters the Statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which he says فَاسْتَبِقُ الْخَيْرَاتِ Hasten to the good. And the commands they fall under the good. In Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 148, Allah says hasten to the good. So the commands they fall under فَاسْتَبِقُ الْخَيْرَاتِ Hasten to the good. So when you, Allah commands you to do something, you should hasten to doing so. And of course, this issue, as I said, is a mas'ala ikhtalaf alayhi al-ulama. The scholars have differed. <coughs> Each one has taken an opinion. Then the author, rahimahullah ta'ala, then the author, rahimahullah, he mentions a mas'ala tata'allaqu bil-amr, a matter that's connected to the command, the chapter that we're talking about. Which is, pay attention to this. هَلِ الْأَمْرُ بِالشَّيْءِ أَمْرٌ بِمَا لَا يَتِمُ إِلَّا بِهِ أَمْ لَا the author talks about the issue which the Usuliyin call مَا لَا يَتِمُ الْوَاجِبُ إِلَّا بِهِ فَوَوَاجِبُ 
if there is something which you can't do, you can't attain this thing unless they, unless you come with something else. Does the thing that does does that does that particular thing become obligatory? I can't pray, for example, without wudu. Does the wudu become obligatory? Because the answer is that the wudu is what sunnah, right? Right now, do you have to do wudu? No, you don't have to do wudu right now. Can somebody say to you, it is wajib for you to do wudu right now? But you don't have wudu and dhuhr comes in, does it become wajib on you? So he's talking about this issue of al amru bi shay'i, amrun bi ma la yatimu bihi, amrun bi ma la yatimu illa bihi. He wants to go into this issue right now. <laughs> and the majority of the usuleen, they word it as what? Ma la yatimu al wajibu illa bihi, fahuwa wajibun. This issue, Ikhwani, when it comes to Al Amru bi ijabi al fi'li amrun bihi, wa bi ma la yatimu al fi'li illa bihi, kal amri bi salati amrun bi taharati al muaddiyati ilayha, this issue we have to understand that ma la yatimu al fi'li illa bihi is no'an. Whatever an action of yours cannot be complete without it is of two types. The first one of them is ahaduhuma, the first one is ma huwa fi was'i al abdi. Ma huwa. في وسع العبد. The first one is that which is in the ability of the slave. It's in the capability and the ability of the slave. Such as the tahara for the salah. The slave has the ability to come with it. And the second one is ما ليس في وسعه وقدرته. And the second one is that which is not part that that's not under your ability. It is not under your ability. Like the entering of the time for the prayer. Are you with me, brothers? The first one of the two is you're commanded to come with it. Of course, in accordance to the ultimate goal that is required here. Because it's, it, because it's the means for it. As for the second one, you're not commanded to come with it. Because it is outside your ability. And the backbone for Amr is what? Al-Qudrati wal-Imkan. Ability and being able to come with it. Kama qala ta'ala as Allah said, فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ مَا اسْتَطَعْتُمْ Fear Allah as much as you're able to. Then the author, rahimahullah, he concluded this point with what? By saying, وَإِذَا فُعِلَ يَخْرُجُ الْمَأْمُورَ عَنِ الْأُهْدَةِ And if the slave does this, he follows the command, what happens? He regains what is known as بَرَاءَةُ الذِّمَّةِ This is now lifted from his shoulders. وَلَا يَكُونُ مُطَالَبًا No one can then ask him to come with it. If he's already done it, he's followed Allah's command, then تَبْرِئُ بِهِ ذِمَّتُهُ his dhimma becomes clear. He can't, he's not requested to come. Are you with me, brothers? He's not requested to come with this particular action. But what we have to understand is that the action has to be sahih. It has to be correct. It has to be done in the way that the sharia legislated. But if he does it in a way, if he does it in a form, غيرها, other than its form, لم تبرأ ذمته. This person's dhimma is not free. He's still requested to come with it. ويكون مطالبا بالقضاء. We're telling him to bring it back. So what we have to understand is the dhimma to be free and for you to be free of this request in this particular action is that it has to be what? موافقا للشرعي. موافقا للشرعي. It has to be in accordance to the Sharia. It has to be in accordance to what? It has to be in accordance to the Sharia. Naam. Who is included in command and prohibition and who is not? The believers are included in Allah's speech, commands and prohibitions, but the inattentive, unaware, young people and the insane are not. Unbelievers are addressed concerning the branches of the revealed laws and concerning Islam, 
without which the performance of the branches is not valid because Allah has said what has landed you in hell they said we did not pray 7443 <laughs> والكفار مخاطبون بفروع الشرائع وبما لا تصح إلا به وهو الإسلام لقوله تعالى حكاية عن الكفار ما سلككم في سقر قالوا لم نكن من المصلين. The author رحمه الله عقد المصنف رحمه الله the author he placed a heading here uh, a heading which he called it الذي يدخل في الأمر والنهي وما لا يدخل And the intent why he brought this chapter or this heading is that Ma'rifatul Mukhatabina Bil Amr wa Who are the people who are actually being addressed in the commands and the prohibitions? Who are the people Allah is speaking to when he commands and the messenger? And who is it that he is prohibiting Allah and his messenger when they prohibit? Who are they? That's why this chapter is. And the author Rahimahullah he mentions when he says, Wa yadkhulu fi khitabillahi ta'ala al mu'minuna. He means the word al mu'minuna here, he means man ittasafa bi wasfat bi sifataini. Man ittasafa. Anybody who is found with him, what? Bi wasfaini, two descriptions. Al aqlu wal bulugh. He's got intellect and he's also reached age of puberty. Those are the two points that the author, rahimahullah, he means here. And that's what they normally call what? Mukallaf, right? So when he says, يَدْخُلُ فِي خِطَابِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى The people who enter or into the command and the prohibition are who? Al-Mu'minuna here, he means Al-Mukallafoon. That's what he means. How do I know that he means that? Because at the bottom, he's going to mention what he means. He's going to expand on it. Are you with me, brothers? He can't have said that the people Allah is commanding and prohibiting are who? The believers, and that's specific to them. And then later say, Does it not contradict itself? It will. So he means here, Al Mu'minun means what? The Mu'minun here are what? The person who has aqal and the person who has bulugh. That's what he means by it. <laughs> then the author, Rahimullah, he mentions, Those who don't enter the khitab. And he said, As Sahi was Sabi wal Majnunu. The sahi is the one who is in state of forgetfulness. He forgot. Was The one who hasn't reached age of puberty. The child, the kid. Wal majnunu. And the one who is what? Are you there? Wal majnunu is what? The one who is insane. Then the author, rahimahullah, goes into the issue at hand which is are the disbelievers being addressed in the sub branches of the religion? Pay attention to this. When Allah Taala says in the Quran fast, when Allah says in the Quran pray, when Allah Taala says pay zakat, are the disbelievers being addressed here? So the author says, and he chooses, and al kufara muhatabuna bifuru' al sharai' that yes. The disbelievers are being addressed in the sub branches of the religion. And then he says, وَمَا لَا تَصِحُ إِلَّا بِهُ وَهُوَ الْإِسْلَامِ So he mentions here that they are addressed in two things. One which is بِفُرُوعِ الشَّرَائِعِ and also أُصُولُ الشَّرَائِعِ The usul of the religion. So what we can say is that that the kuffar are مُخَاطَبُونَ إن الكفار مخاطبون بالشريعة كلها أصلا وفرعا. That the disbelievers are being addressed in the matters which are fundamentals in the religion, which they have to come with, which is لا إله إلا الله. They have to they have to enter into Islam, and they are also being addressed in sub branches of the religion, both simultaneously. The scholars unanimously agree that they are being addressed in أصول الشريعة. They all agree that anything that's أصل من أصول الشريعة. That the disbelievers are being addressed here because they're the ones that be, they're the ones who are being told to enter into Islam, but they differ 
whether they are being addressed in furu or shara'ya. And the author, rahimahullah, he brings an evidence to support his argument. He brings a qawluhu ta'ala, the statement of Allah, مَا سَلَكَكُمْ فِي سَقَرْ قَالُوا لَمْ نَكُمْ مِنَ الْمُصَلِّينَ وَلَمْ نَكُمْ نُطْعِمُ الْمِسْكِينَ وَكُنَّا نَخُوضُ مَعَ الْخَائِضِينَ وَكُنَّا نُكَذِّبُ بِيَوْمِ الدِّينَ The fact that they left a prayer and they didn't pray and did not look after the uh, poor is from the sub-branches of the religion, right? So they're saying here, the reason why we entered hellfire, when they were asked, why did you guys end up entering hellfire? Their response was what? We were not from those who prayed. And we never provided for those who were in need. We didn't give zakat. They're saying. We didn't do that. That's all furu'. Pay attention. Is that not furu'? That's furu'. Then look what is what takdibu biyomid deen. We disbelieved in the day of judgment. This is from what? Usulu deen. This is from the Al Iman Billah wa Malaika to Kutu Rusul wa Yamal Akhul Tumil Bil Qadr Khair wa Sharia. Shari. Wa to be bil qadr khairi wa shari. From the six pillars of the six articles of faith is what? Al Imanu Billahi, believing in Allah. Wal Khawdum al Khaidina is what? We indulge with those who indulged. This can be either Furu' al Masail or it can also it can also enter it can also me it can also enter Usul Sharaya. So my brothers and sisters, you have to understand that the disbelievers are addressed when salah is said pray, they're also being addressed. Now this issue we have to understand, my beloved brothers and sisters, which is the issue of can we divide the religion into asal and a farah? Can we categorize the religion and say this is the asal and this is a farah? Where does this come from? Some people with their ignorance and their lack of understanding, what they say to you is that usul din it is meant by matters pertaining to here ma'ta'allaqa bil aqaid. Anything connected to aqidah is usul. <coughs> So they say to you, فَلَا يَسُّغُ فِيهَا الْإِخْتِلَافِ So there's, there's no, we can't differ in this issue. Anything aqidah related is usul. Are you with me brothers? So we're not allowed to differ on it. وَأَنَّ الْفُرُوعَ And the furu' is what? مَا تَعَلَّقَ بِالْفِقْ And furu' is anything that's fiqh. فَيَسُغُ فِيهَا الْإِخْتِلَافِ And we are, we are allowed to have difference of opinion in it. And then after that, they started to build arguments on that. وَرَتَّبُوا عَلَى ذَلِكَ لَوَازِمَ عندهم. Then they necessitate so many things from that. It's a premise that needs to be questioned. And that is, that meaning is باطل باطل باطل. It's باطل. كما حققه شيخ الإسلام ابن تيمية وتلميذه ابن القيم. As ابن تيمية strengthens and proves and also العلامة ابن القيم الجوزية رحمه الله. And what is authentic and correct is أن أصول الدين that Usul, the foundation of the religion is what? هِيَ الْمَسَائِلِ الَّتِي لَا تَقْبَلُ الْإِجْتِهَادِ This is the correct definition of it. Usul al-Din means anything that does not accept ijtihad. It does not accept any ijtihad. Personal striving. Personal deduction. It doesn't, requ- it doesn't accept that. كانت في الخبريات أو طلبيات. It can be in matters of عقيدة or it can be matters of fiqh. It doesn't matter. خبريات are matters of عقيدة and it can be matters of what? Of طلبيات. So there are some matters that don't accept ijtihad. They don't accept ijtihad. The only way that an issue cannot accept ijtihad is when, is a, when there is a nas or an ijma. Any masala that has a nas has a textual evidence, kitab or sunnah, kitab or sunnah, or there is an ijma, there's a consent in it, ya ikhwatil kiram, la yasugu fi la yasugu fihi l'ijtihad. There's no ijtihad in this matter. Because the qa'idah is, la ijtihada bimawrid al-nas. There's no ijtihad when there is the presence of a text. Are you with me, brothers? It can be matters of aqidah and it can be matters of what? Fiqh. Ya ikhwah. المسح على الخفين what is it a مسألة فقهية right why did the scholars add it to matters of what عقيدة جهاد is it matters of fiqh it is why did the scholars take مسائل الجهاد and place it at the ending of their books of عقيدة that you have to fight fight behind the Muslim leader the oppressive Muslim leader why did they mention in their books of عقيدة because it's from the مسائل التي لا تقبل الاجتهاد it doesn't accept الاجتهاد 
وإن كانت even though it's in what في الطلبيات even though it's in مسائل الفقه it is what لا يتقبل الاجتهاد are you with me brothers pay attention فروع الدين on the other side on the other hand matters which have فروع sub branches ah هي المسائل التي تقبل الاجتهاد there are matters that accept اجتهاد is matters that accept اجتهاد كانت في الخبريات أو الطالبيات whether it is العقيدة related matters are you with me brothers or matters pertaining to what فقه for example are you with me brothers هل رأى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ربه did the messenger see his lord are you with me brothers is this عقيدة related matter نعم are you with me brothers is it عقيدة related matter <coughs> it is but did the sahabas differ amongst themselves are you there brothers did they نعم they did so we say it is what it is فروع it's from the فروع of the religion التي تقبل الاجتهاد it is accepts اجتهاد are you with me brothers so the def- definition of usul and the definition of فروع is important then the author رحمه الله he said a, uh, a statement which is الامر بالشيء نهي عن ضده والنهي عن الشيء امر بضده which is that the author speaks about masala which is important connected to command and he delayed it the author delayed it رحمه الله which is that if something is commanded for you to do does that mean you're prohibited from the opposite And if you're prohibited from something, does that mean you're commanded the opposite? The author, on the other hand, he clearly states that that if you're commanded to do something, then the opposite you're prohibited from. That's the opinion he chooses. And if you're prohibited from something, then that means you're, opp- you're commanded the opposite of it. Pay attention to this. This statement of his, the author, is really built on a matter that is very problematic. As you're all aware of, Abi Ma'ali al-Juwaini, rahimahullahu ta'ala, wa ghafara lahu, may Allah forgive him, he was a what? An Ash'ari. And these mabahith of usul al-fiqh and matters like that, they will throw in sometimes doses of their state of their belief. So if a student of knowledge, tanqih and tahqiq is not done for him, it's not cleared for him, in order not to fall into that issue, wailat will come to him from it. Harm may occur to him from it. And this mas'ala is built upon, according to Abu Ma'ali Dwayne and others, is really built upon the argument of what? In the belief that they have regarding Allah's speech. أَنَّهُ مَعْنًا قَائِمٌ بِنَفْسِهِ تَعَالَى أما بِنَفْسِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى that the Qur'an is an own entity that stands by itself. Are you with me? Brothers, are you with me? Pay attention to this, very scary. Are you with me, brothers? So they say, are you with me, brothers? Is the speech something that is, we believe the speech is what? We believe something in the speech is what? It's ha, it's laf and ma'nan. We took it in Manhaj al-Haq, right? We took it in many other books as well. Kitab al-Sifat and others. Is that Allah's speech is the wordings that we see is His and the meaning is from Him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. They believe the meaning is from Him, the wording is not. The reason is because they believe that the speech of Allah is within Him. Whereas, pay attention to this. The Amr is a nafs. And the nahyu is a nafs. Two entities that stand by itself. Are you with me, brothers? They're two nafs. So once a command comes, it's going to automatically go against the opposite one, which is a nahyu. Are you with me, brothers? If there are two things that are not within Allah, they are not, oh, sorry, they are not, uh, they are qa'im, uh, this Quran, kalam of Allah is within him. So how did this Quran come about? This is where the discussion comes. People say, okay, we got the Quran here. And this is the speech of Allah. How did it happen? 
the shaira come into the concept of saying that the Quran is makhluk here now. They come and say that the Quran is makhluk. Some of them said, no, 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 it's the statement of Jibreel. Ah, no. Some said, no, it's the statement of the Prophet. It's the Quran is the Prophet. The Prophet is interpreting what's in, what's in, what's in within Allah. Jibreel is interpreting for us what's within Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala. So what then came from their argument is that the command and the what? The nafs are both created. Allah created them. The commands that were coming to us are created. The nahi is created. Two entities, they oppose each other. If one affirms, the other one has to go. So that's why they say, Al-amru bishayi nahiyun amdiddihi. They're two entities that if a command comes, it will automatically go against the prohibition. This is issue is what they, they mean by this. <coughs> and it is issue that Abdul, uh, Sheikh Muhammad Amin Shaqidi said, It's fire under it, there's hot charcoal, hot uh, ashes, uh, trying to burn people. As Abdul uh, Sheikh Muhammad, uh, Muhammad Amin Shaqidi mentions in his, in his Mudakira, in his Mudakira in Usul al-Fiqh. So what we say is the correct opinion is that the amr of something is not the it's not the prohibition the opposite of it directly. Okay, it is not al amru bishayi when you're commanded to do something laysa aynu nahi it is not the prohibition itself. Are you with me, brothers? If you're commanded to do something, it is not the opposite of the prohibition itself in and within itself. Rather, it just necessitates from it. It necessitates from it. So the, what we should say is, الْأَمْرُ بِالشَّيْءِ يَسْتَلْزِمُ النَّهِيَ عَنْ ضِدِّهِ وَالْأَمْرُ عَنِ الشَّيْءِ فَإِنَّهُ يَلْزَمُ مِنْهُ الْأَمْرُ بِضِدِّهِ نعم. سمع. Who is included... The command to do something is the prohibition of its opposite and the prohibition of something is the command to do its opposite. A prohibition is a verbal demand obliging an, an inferior to omit an act. The verbal form of command occurs with the meaning of permitting, threatening, giving alternatives or bring into creation. والنحي عن الشيء أمر بضده وهو إس وهو وهو استدعاء الترك بالقول ممن هو دونه على سبيل الوجوب ويدل على فساد المنهي عنه وترد صيغة الأمر والمراد بها الند أو الإباحة أو التهديد أو التسوية أو التكوين. The author رحمه الله he mentions in this chapter the issue of nahi now. We talked about al-amr, he's now talking about al-nahyu. Again, his definition of al-nahyu, la yaslamu min al-mu'tirad. It's still argument, it can be arg it's arguable. And as we took before, that amr was what? Talabu, it is what? Ma talabahu shari'u fi'lahu talaban jazima, sah? The opposite, the, 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 what do you call it? The nahi is what? Ma talabahu al-shari'u tarkahu talaban jaziman. So the opposite between the amar, the opposite between the amar and the nahi is that one is to come with something and one is to leave off something. <coughs> so the sharia is requesting for you to leave off something in a forceful manner. That is what nahi is. As for the definition which he gives, which is a... Uh, then the same argument will be put against him in the issue of al qawlu right? Which we said about the issue of Al-Amru. That it can happen that you are prohibited from something in a manner where it is not verbally. It's written. So that definition of his لا يسلم من الاعتراض يا إخوة الكرام my beloved brothers and sisters النهيو, the prohibition that is connected to the action, it goes back to four points. 
And inshallah, I'm not going to give you guys examples as I'm going to request from each and every one of you to bring me examples. When the prohibition is connected to the action of the people or the, the prohibition itself, are you with me, brothers? And the Sharia requests from you to leave something in a forceful manner, it goes back to four things. The first one it goes back to is as follows. It goes back to the action itself. Or its pillar. That's the first. The second one is, it goes back, the prohibition goes back to its conditions. It goes back to its conditions. The third one is, it goes back to It goes back to a description that's never going to detach itself from it. Are you with me? Are you with me, brothers? This thing, there's a description that's consistently with it that won't go. The prohibition is connected to that sifa. The fourth one is, an external prohibition is why it's prohibited for. Are you with me, brothers? The first three that I mentioned, the first three, the first three types of prohibitions, by default, Whatever it is that the person comes with is null and void. If something is prohibited and the prohibition goes back to in and within itself, which is the first one, or it goes back to the conditions, or the prohibition goes to a sifatun mulazimu lahu, then that thing, that action that you have come with is null and void. Wududuhu ka'adamu. Its, its presence is like its absence. As for if it goes towards the fourth one, it doesn't necessarily... Uh, it doesn't necessarily entail that your action is null and void. Then the author, rahimahullah, he speaks about an issue which is that siyagul amr, the forms that the command comes in the sharia and the usage that it can be used for is like the following al ibah, or with tahdeed, or with taswiyat, or with taqween. That the Amar can be used for all these. And inshallah ta'ala, we're going to conclude there bi'idhnillahi al-kareem. Any mistakes and any shortcomings that I might have come with whilst I was speaking or explaining is from me and shaitan and Allah and his messenger are free from it. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik, ashadu an la ilaha illallah, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayhi.